So guys, it's on Sunday. And in today's uh, service, it's the youth who are leading the congregation. So my church is called African Inland Church. And it is actually a Protestant church. And some few weeks ago, I was asking you all if it's a good idea to change my church from a Protestant, which is African Inland Church, to another Protestant church, which is a Catholic church, since my kids do study in a Catholic school. And I am thankful I got the best advices. The suggestion was, a church is a church. At the end of the day, we worship only one God. And guys, as I had told you, the youths who are leading the church today, and at this point, it's, it was time for offering. And after I actually like uh, dropped my offering or gave out my offering, I started recording um, the activities that were ongoing in my church. And currently, as you can see, all the youth who are called in front of the church or in the podium to sing as other congregants give out their offerings. So normally, uh, the youths, the men and the women will lead the, the church. Like today, it's the youths. The next Sunday, it will be men and then women and then it rotates like that. And then maybe it goes to the normal programming where actually um, they will just select some few people to lead the church. So today in church, we were taught about how to grow spiritually and the meaning of spiritual growth is actually nurturing a meaningful relationship with God. And some of the things that we were told in church that blocks our spiritual uh, growth, they are found in the book of Matthew 26 verses 41. And one of them is listening to our body or listening to the body a lot instead of listening to our spirit. So that is one of the things that block us from spiritual growth or from our spiritual growth. Another thing is living in sin. And when I talk about living in sin, it's like being jealous of uh, your friend, your sister. And another thing is uh, unforgiveness, greediness, all those actually they are, are living in sin. Point number three that actually makes us not to grow spiritually is materialism. That one, you can find it in the book of James 1 verses 17. And the last one is laziness. So next time I will tell you about uh, things that can make us grow spiritually and the benefits of spiritual growth. So that's what you were taught in church, and I hope you've learned something. Now, the following day on Monday, I actually uh, participated in my normal routine, waking up at 5.30 a.m. in the morning, preparing the kids to go to school, and after 6.25, me and my bike cycling to the gym. And actually, you see the GoPros, they normally show as if it's not even dark. I never understand why. Even if I film a video at 6 p.m. heading to 7 p.m., like it will be a little bit darker. But at the same time, the GoPro would actually record it in such a way that it's not dark. So this was actually six around 6.30 a.m. in the morning, heading to the gym. And I love using this road very, very much because number one, it's a shortcut. Number two, it's not very busy. Now, the main disadvantage of this is, uh, you see, it's not tarmacked. 
So a lot of dust uh, is there in the road and a lot of stones. But I'm not saying that to complain about anything because uh, this is our life here in Africa. So I was. it was just a by the way because after all there is nothing I can do about a government project because all the roads are under government. It's the government which is supposed to be actually like um, developing, creating, constructing for us. It's the job of our government. And as you can see, the road is not hilly and not steep, but better. And sometimes you will wonder like you are in a somehow flat surface, but if you cycle, you feel like it's really hard. It's really, really hard to cycle. Like you, I use a lot of energy. Now that is the beauty of topography. And when you walk on the same surface, you will not feel as if it's a hill unless you are only cycling. Here I was on a downhill going uh, to the gym still. And my good people, you know, the main challenge that I have now is like I'm supposed to stop eating rice, anything that has a lot of carbohydrates. It's really tough, but I'll just try my best. You know, I was talking with my friend yesterday and she told me, you can never drop something like just instantly. You just reduce the amount until it reaches a point where you will not, like the body just gets used to um, the amount of food that you take but you can't just wake up and say today I am not taking sugar like it can't happen you just reduce because of the body like it's already used to and my good people you know I actually love going to the gym in the morning because it gives me the freedom to plan myself well during or for the rest of the day. I will go, especially on Mondays, I go actually for aerobic sessions, Wednesdays and Fridays. It's always vigorous. It's always like, we actually do a lot of aerobics during those three days and it normally takes away my energy. Another thing, I'm supposed to be taking two meals in a day. Oh my God. I am still learning that. I am still learning to be sincere because I am not that kind of person who takes large portions of food at the same time. I love taking, and I am used to taking small portion of food, but within a short period of time, which I came to learn later that it's very dangerous and it's not a good eating habit to eat all the time, like every hour you are just there um, ingesting something. Every Each and every hour, it's not good. But if you actually take your meals at a specific time, then the best. But again, I was told if you want to lose weight like really quickly and within two weeks, if you just decide to cut everything to do with carbohydrates, sugar, vegetable uh, cooking oil and eat a lot of boiled stuffs for two weeks continuously, you're going to lose weight automatically. But my question is, how fast will the body adapt? Because for me, it has been hard, like extremely hard for the body to adapt to these changes. I tried it for two days. But for the third day, like my body really needed something sugary. It's like when I go to the gym, when I come out, I just feel like taking something sugary. So normally I love taking sugar cane. I feel good after doing that. And now this brings me to alcoholic people. I now understand why it's really hard for them to like, just stop drinking like that, like instantly. And that's why most of the people go to rehabilitation centers to be assisted. 
Wow. When it comes to our bodies, when actually you become big bodied or fat, it's always very hard for it to reduce. So, or I would love to encourage you to live healthy, eat healthy, not just any howling. Because a gym, when it comes to going to the gym, it's a matter of having an interest. Otherwise, otherwise you might stop attending fitness session. Like you can't just wake up and tell someone, let's go. Let's do this. The person must have made up uh, their mind and accepted to attend these sessions. For me now, it's my second month and I am grateful that I am really enjoying because since I started, like my body, I feel like I've been very active. <coughs> I have been, <coughs> I've been very active, number two, I feel very light. As much as the body is still big, I feel extremely light, extremely light. Like now, climbing a hill, even by walking, is not an issue to me. Before, it was an issue because I will breathe heavily. But now, I don't breathe heavily. And I can easily go uphill. I am sure even when I go back to my grandmother's place, which actually I'm planning to. I just want to uh, get someone to help me take care of the kids so that I can run uh, to say hello to my grandmother and maybe come back. For those who have been watching me from uh, before, there is a time I traveled to my uh, grandmother, grandmother's place, my maternal grandmother's place, and actually I managed uh, to construct a uh, a better home. There we have a lot of hills and I will climb this or I will go uphill and I will breathe heavily, like extremely heavily. So now I just want to go and test it, test myself. I want to go and climb and go that up. My grandmother has actually been uh, going that up, that hill for the last over 30 years. And that is why when you look at her now, she looks very young <laughs> and some people will actually be like is she really your grandmother or your mother <laughs> it's because of the hill so guys i'm almost arriving at the gym or in the gym guys this english they are not perfect in it but we're just trying to communicate we are almost arriving and here it's another I don't know how to describe this road. You can imagine a repair was done here, but it doesn't look like something, some work happened because now it is more dusty than even how it was. At some point, you will feel like putting on a mask, but at the same time, you can't put on a mask as you are cycling because there is that breath that you normally take in. Like, by the way, when you're cycling, it's really hard to wear a surgical mask in order to prevent the inhalation of this dust. But I hope in the near future, our governments will just um, consider constructing tarmac roads because they are the best, they're smooth. You see this? When I'm riding, I will just have to look. Like, I just have to look uh, down on the road so that I can't actually uh, go on a rock because when you actually go on an unstable rock, you might fall down. See how I am riding on a hill. <laughs> really tough. <laughs> uh, I think it takes me around 20 minutes to get to the gym around 20 minutes, I think so, or 15 minutes there, I don't know. But I am almost there. 
And today, actually, I was not really confident in my dressing. I don't know why. I think it's because of the red stuffs and the yellow, like they weren't matching. I was not really comfortable, but I just had to because it was very, 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 very cold. It was extremely cold, by the way. Even this morning, it was very cold. So guys, I'm really loving this journey. I can't wait to see my fitness journey after six months. I just pray to God that I will never lack uh, the finances to attend these gym sessions. They are actually very affordable. 1,700 per month, Kenyan shillings, basically. That is actually how many? $10. What's up, guys? Uh, so it's actually my 30th or 31st day uh, of my fitness session. I, I thank God that I'm going on well. So actually, it's time to do the renewal. You see, like in a month. But this time round, I'm not going to pay the hundred uh, for registration. Or, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to pay for registration. I'm only going to pay this. It's a renewal um, for the gym session. Per month, it's 1,700 or 100 Kenyan shillings per day. So outside here, we have an exhauster. So this is what normally um, empties our septic tank. So these are wastes from this building. And these are the cars that are normally used at uh, gym the West collection. So guys, um, I'll see you in the evening or maybe I'll just go on vlogging while cycling back at home. Um, so um, um, the same friend that I normally come to the gym with and Mr. David is our so, official instructor yes. on this other end of uh, the aerobics. Uh, on the other end of uh, uh, weightlifting, yeah. it's Mr. Terence. So, Mr. Uh, David, maybe you yes. can say hello to our people again today. I uh, just want to say every day, make sure you make sure you work out every morning. Every morning and eat clean. Yes. 